Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mythic for Operators. Today we're going to be looking at creating payloads. So there's two different places you can go to create a payload in Mythic. The first option is to click the little hamburger icon, come down here to create, and say create payload. The other option is to take this payloads shortcut up here at the top to all of your already created payloads, then selecting the actions button and generate new payload. Once you get here, you'll see we have a couple of different steps we're gonna go through. We're gonna select our target operating system, payload type, select command that we wanna bundle into the agent, the C2 profiles, and then finally build it. So whenever we select our target operating system, we have a couple of different options. These are pre-populated based off of the operating systems that our installed agents support. So in this instance, we have Apollo and Poseidon installed. Windows is available because of Apollo. Linux and Mac OS is available because of Poseidon. So let's look at the Windows. Here, we only have Apollo installed that supports it, and Apollo has one build parameter. So these build parameters are options that you can use to change how the build process works for any given agent. This is agent specific. So in this case, for Apollo, we can do executable or shell code. Let's select executable. Now we're brought to the ability to select what commands we wanna have bundled into the agent at compile time. This is an agent specific feature, so not every agent supports it, but this allows payload type developers to identify what commands should or should not be included in an agent and allow you to create a smaller agent with a smaller subset of features and dynamically load new things at runtime. On the left hand side, we have all the available commands that have not yet been included. And on the right hand side, we have all the commands that are currently marked to be included inside of this build. For any one of these, if you hover over them, you'll see the bottom changing with the name of the command, the command helpline, permissions, and a brief description about what's going on. Now, you'll notice that whenever I first got to this page, there were already some commands over here on the commands included side. If we hover over any one of these, we can see this additional information line that identifies this command is suggested to be included. So the payload type developer has said that this subset of commands makes the smallest, most commonly useful set of features for you to add in by default. Now, of course, we could always remove a command or add a new command over here. What's interesting to note is this exit command is grayed out. We can't select it, can't do anything. If we hover over it, we see down here, this command is built in and must be included. Again, this is a feature for developers to be able to say, it makes no sense to make an agent without the exit command, for example. And of course, for any one of these, if you're curious about what's going on or how it works, you can always hit the documentation link and come into the internal documentation for that agent to see what's going on and how it works. So we have our features, we select next, here we have what C2 profiles we wanna include inside of our agent. So we only have one C2 profile installed that the Apollo agent supports. This is the HTTP profile. Toggle that we wanna to include it. And now we have all the C2 profile specific options that we want to provide. So things like callback host, an interval, what callback port we wanna to connect to, do we wanna do encryption, what kind of headers do we want, all sorts of stuff available to you that you might expect from an HTTP profile. So let's leave all this as default and click next. This last part here is kind of a review and build stage. So we specify the name that we want for our executable and a description. So for example, this description field is what will auto-populate and create the description for any callbacks based off of this payload type. Let's say we create payload, you'll see a couple things happen, happen immediately. We failed to build this payload because of a couple of things that are happening behind the scenes. So every time you select a C2 profile to include as part of a payload, a couple of steps happen in the background. We uh, call the opsec check here. And in this case, the opsec check is failing because the callback host is still set to the default of domain.com. We didn't change it. Additionally, there is a configuration check that goes on. So Mythic takes the configuration that you're trying to do for that payload and sends it off to the C2 profile container to say, does this configuration work with what you are currently configured to do? In this case, 
The HTTP container is by default configured to listen on port 80 without SSL. Our default config here said HTTPS to port 80. So there's a mismatch. So what we can see here is this configuration check is calling this out. Specified use of SSL and ports indicate either a redirector or mismatch expected connectivity. And it calls it out clearly here, agent HTTPS on port 80. So in order to have that work, you would need to have a redirector forward to your C2 profile container without SSL on port 80. Alternatively, this gives you a step-by-step -step guide of how to go through and update the C2 profile to then use SSL on port 80. So let's go ahead, close this. We'll go back for our C2 container and we'll fix this. So maybe we won't be doing HTTPS because we said port 80 and our C2 profile is listening on port 80. And let's make some other domain, something else. We'll leave everything else, click next. Now we'll click create again. And you can see up here at the top, we're going through these various steps on creating this payload. So we gathered our files, we are currently compiling. And after that, if we selected shellcode, we'd pass that through Donut. And you see that was automatically updated here. For any one of these steps, you can click the little icon and see what's going on. In this case, it took 12 seconds. We successfully compiled the payload. Now you can click download here, or you can always go back to your payloads page and see the individual payloads that we created here. So again, this is our Apollo one that succeeded and the Apollo one that did not. So that's kind of the general process for going through to build a payload. In the next video, we'll talk about what you can do with payloads that are already created. And there's a lot of different things that we can do.